action. Malachi 2, 3. Behold, I will rebuke your offspring and spread dung upon your faces. <laughs> the dung of your offerings, and I will put you out of my presence. Good day, sir. Bye. This has been Catholic Conversations, the fourth episode with Nicholas D'Alessandro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> All right, we have a uh, we have a live audience here. It's my cousin. Oh, we need an audience cam. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Nick. Nick, say hi. So, uh, what? Tell tell them something about yourself. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I didn't expect to be grilled so hard. Uh, Why are you the way you are? Because God made me this way. Oh, uh, God made you. Genius, look at this. All right. Anyways, this is this is Nick, my cousin. Sup? He goes to college. I go to college. On, on for his sake in school. We're not going to even name it. Because he doesn't go to this school. Franciscan University. Uh, no. <laughs> I go to University of Dayton, the number one Marianist college in the United States of America. Mm. Yo, you want to talk about Mary? <laughs> Just kidding. We don't have to talk about Mary. That's uh, a little complex. It's a little complex for a simple brain like me. <laughs> well, let's talk about it. Do, 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 do. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, yeah, Mary. So... She's pretty cool. She's the only perfect human to ever exist hmm. besides Jesus. But Jesus gets okay. a, Jesus kind of gets a pass because he's also the son of God. He kind of, he gets like an asterisk. <laughs> it's like he's, a, well, actually, what did you say? All right. David's kind of, <laughs> he's leaving. There's going to be a shadow right there. Okay. Bye, David. <laughs> See ya. Wait, did you say Mary was the only perfect human that exists besides Jesus? Am I wrong? I don't know. <laughs> well, there could be one that right. we don't know about. No, no, but... but Jesus is Jesus is a divine person. He's not a human person. He's a divine person clothed in humanity. Okay. I took Christology. That's the only reason. <laughs> so like, yeah. so yeah, she's like the she's the only perfect human. To human remember. person, I guess. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Well, You're right. glad we agree. <laughs> I don't really know. I just want, don't want to be heretical. Not that anyone that's watching this is no, going to like I mean, if, if there's anyone out there who is perfect and just hasn't told anyone yet, <laughs> yeah. please leave it in the comments Let below. us know if you're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're Catholic, right? This is Catholic conversation. Yes, indeed. But there's this whole stigma around Catholics, like, we worship Mary and stuff. Do you mm -hmm. know? Have you heard that? People are like, why yeah. do you worship Mary? Well, she was, like... I don't know what the perfect term is, but venerated, I guess, not like by God, like mm. given like the, you're good, like, like yeah, mother, <laughs> she's the mother of God, guys, you're fine. Like we don't, we don't worship her. We mm. worship Jesus through her since she's almost like a connection. Whoa. Like she kind of acts as like the ultimate deacon for us. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? What do you mean So like deacon? the deacon is supposed Your to be- Your dad's a deacon. That's Shout right. out to Deacon Mike. Deacon Mike. Uh- uh, deacon is supposed to be the connection between the clergy and the like priest in the church because hmm. he's like married and like part of the community, but he's also got that connection to the church. Whoa. So in my mind, Mary's like that, where she's got the connection to the human race because she, well, like <laughs> she was, she's human. Honest. Yes, she's human. But also she has that connection to God since she was divinely perfect hmm. and like, yeah. <laughs> I like that. All right, Simon's. What are you doing? <laughs> Simon's gonna leave. <laughs> He's crawling back here. Oh man! Look, look at his shadow. <laughs> He's a snake. All right. Anyways, we'll just keep going. Snake mm -hmm. on set. I I like that. I think uh, that's also like Jesus is, and he's fully human and fully divine, mm -hmm. and he's like connects us and God. <laughs> but also like. Mary does that as well. But it's like, here's another thing that I want to ask you. Like, as Catholics, what's the difference between, like, worshipping and venerating? And why do we venerate, like, just why do we venerate anyone in general? Before we talk about Mary specifically. Why, why any saints? Um, 
that's a good question. I think it comes down to a seeking of wisdom in a situation or a seeking mm. of help in a situation that mm. you know that saint has dealt with or mm. can help you with. Like, for example, uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, no. I definitely have one. I just need wait, wait, to... hang on. But that's a bold claim right there. Hmm? Like, why are you saying that a saint could help you? Are you saying, like, you think about them or are they actually, like, because it's proven because they there's they're saints because they have proof that they have intervened at other times like pr- oh. during their life and post life as well it, like it's two and two right like, yeah yeah exactly so you're saying so. the saints are part of the living body of christ and they can interact with us like because this is such a bold claim mm-hmm. like the fact that the saints that are already dead can still interact with us on this earth like i don't think many people believe that just as Catholics, we kind of take that for granted. Mm-hmm. I guess that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, if you don't, do you have an example that you want to say? It's okay if you don't. I'm um, bad at thinking of examples. Well, there's, when uh, you lose your stuff. <laughs> when we you lose know, your stuff. <laughs> and uh, St. Thomas, he lost stuff. St. Thomas. Is it St. Thomas? Saint, uh, I don't Saint know. St. Anthony. St. Anthony, he lost stuff. <laughs> I'm sure he lost stuff in his life. Yeah. So when you uh, pray to St. Anthony, he uh, he's like, oh, yeah, I lost stuff. So I'm going to make it so this person doesn't have to go through what I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he helps you find stuff. Yeah. As you can tell, I've never lost a single thing in my life. So I've never had to do that prayer. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. Never. Um, I, yeah, that's St. Anthony is someone that a lot of people pray to. There's tons of like miracles that like legit miracles, like healings. Like, mm-hmm. be because, like, people have prayed to saints that we know, like, in our family, in our community. All right, so we got the saints down. Why Why is Mary any different than any of the saints, though? Yes, because she was perfect and the others weren't. Uh, but the others I mean, are perfect now because they're in heaven. Well, yeah, but, like, on earth, she got an A+, plus and they got, like, an A or an A-. minus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like it. <laughs> yeah, like, she she got into Harvard, they got into, like... Well, they also got into Harvard, but they got into, like, the they, not as good. <laughs> they got into, like, the feeder school. Yeah. No, they got put on the wait list, and then they got submitted <laughs> Then later. they got it. She yeah, was yeah. in Harvard right away, baby. <laughs> but Mary, it wasn't, like, everything that Mary is is because of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like, Jesus, like, Jesus applied the grace that, he applied the grace of his death and resurrection to Mary at her conception. That's why we call it the Immaculate Conception. Like, the Immaculate Conception is not when Jesus was conceived, which people think. It's when mm-hmm. Mary was conceived without original sin. But that wasn't of her own doing. That was that was of Jesus' doing, of mm-hmm. God's doing, that he applied that grace to her at conception. So, this is how I see it. Like, when we venerate Mary, when we, like, not worship her, but when we venerate her, we, we like, praise God for his creation of Mary. It's like, so, like, if you go to an art show and you're like, whoa, like, Th- this artist is like, yo, look at all my paintings. And then you just like go right to the artist. You're like, oh my gosh, you're such a beautiful person. Mm-hmm. Like, wow, you're so awesome. He's like, no, I want you to look at my paintings. I created these so that you would be inspired, so that you would see them, so that you would be led towards me eventually. But they express me. Mm-hmm. So in a sense, like God, Jesus is creation, which is Mary, which is everybody, but especially Mary, like you said, perfect. Like she's going to lead us towards God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cut, cut. So let's get a little personal. Have you personally, like, do, do you struggle with, with the idea of Mary a little bit? Because I know, like, a lot of people probably do, and I have too. But just to get, like, a little bit more relatable. I think everyone does, yeah. Uh, it's tough because you don't want to be, like, too, like, worshipy with it. Like, like, there is some truth when people are, like, yeah, you, you, you guys can't, like, worship her too much because... Like, some people probably do mm. at some points. Like, not everyone. Like, the majority of people don't. But uh, certainly, there's a couple people who definitely put a little too much on Mary. You good? Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and you just got to find a like good balance, I guess. Because she's definitely key to, like, getting that, like, actual little push towards heaven and push mm. towards being a saint. Yeah. But if you try if like i don't know sometimes i think people go too far in a sense and just forget like 
the purpose originally, mm. which is God and them. Yeah. And I like what you said. Like, there's always going to be an outlier. There's always going to be the people that take it too far. But that doesn't mean, like, all Catholics in general do it. Because, like, we can just admit that there's always going to be bad Catholics. Like, there's always going to be, like, someone that takes it to the extreme. Like, in any religion, too. You can't just generalize the whole religion. Mm -hmm. Which I think some people do to Catholics. Not to play the victim or anything. (laughs) But, yeah. And, like, also, you don't necessarily need to, like, venerate Mary to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Like, we, all we do need is Jesus, but Mary just, like, helps. Like, why, why not, Mm -hmm. you know? (laughs) I was going to say something else. What was I going to say? That's, that's, uh, I thought you were about to say something else. (laughs) It's just like, okay. So, Mary. So, a couple things. One, there's a 33-day consecration to Mary. And I found that very helpful because you're, it's not just, like, you're just, like, learning about Mary through it. And it's mm-hmm. it's educated. And, like, Mary's found so much in the scriptures. And in the Old Testament, she's prefigured. So, like, <clears throat> have you ever heard... Let's end on this. Have you ever heard of Mary as queen mother? Have you ever heard of that concept? Yes. So, yes. you have... In the Old Testament, it's, like, in Kings or Chronicles, you have Solomon, who's the king. Mm-hmm. And who is the queen? It's not his wife. Because... What does he have? 700 wives? Mm -hmm. So it's not his wife. The queen is the mother. So Solomon's there. He has his throne. And then he has another throne brought next to him for his mother, his queen mother. And you can see it throughout the scriptures that the queen mother intercedes for the people and kind of speaks into the ear of the king, like the needs of the people. Mm -hmm. So Mary does that for us. Not that Jesus like isn't, he doesn't already know everything. But the fact that, like, Mary, like, takes our petitions and he and she brings them to Jesus. And, like, when it's her, like, Jesus can't deny her. Mm -hmm. And Mary's, like, all mercy. Like, Jesus, God, is, like, mercy and justice. But Mary is just all mercy. So it's, like, it's more beneficial to, like, go through her to Jesus. And then eventually, obviously, the goal is God. Mm -hmm. I, I find it interesting when people say that... God is all good because he is, but more importantly, he's fair more th- more so than he's good. So mm-hmm. people will mistake his goodness as like mercy in a sense. And while he is merciful, like he's also f- fair up, and just. above all, fair and just above all. So on the other hand, though, I think Mary this is a hard way to put it. This might be heresy. <laughs> just, yeah. just try, just try. No, no, we could cut this if it's wrong. But, All right, that's okay. Uh, Mary has a huge capacity for mercy, more attainable by us than through God, if that makes sense. I don't know. That could be true. Like, Because, like, there's, I've heard so many stories of, like, people like that... We don't know how much truth is to these, but, like, people, like, going for judgment and then coming back to life. But, like, Mary being the one, like, begging for mercy, mm. like, like telling, like, God, like, hey, let him go back or, like, save them mm. or something like that. I don't know how true those yeah. stories are, but, like, that definitely sounds plausible. Because <laughs> God is, yeah. like, bound. He's, like, bound to, not that he has limits, but he is bound to being fully just. Mm-hmm. Like, because that's God, he's justice himself. He's love itself. He's mercy itself. But Mary, she, like we said, like the saints can intervene for us. And we're like in a communion of saints. She speaks into the ear of God and she's, she's not bound to being fully just. Mm-hmm. Like she is just, can just be fully mercy. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, like just the testimonies, I think. Even if like, it's, this is hard to like logically wrap her head around, like, There's so many testimonies like Mary. Just, like, look at all the Marian apparitions. She obviously wants us to, like, interact with her. Mm -hmm. Like, just that alone. Yeah, yo, yo, hit me up. (laughs) Hit me up. Yo, pray that rosary. Pray that rosary. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, the whole justice mercy thing, like, ah, it's so hard for me to, like, wrap my head around. But I think, I think we didn't get into heresy. I don't know. Comment below if you're, like... Comment below if I had just committed heresy against the Catholic Church. Yeah, and then report us to the bishop. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah <laughs> alright well right. this has been 
I think this is the fourth episode of Catholic Conversations. Do you have anyone that you want to shout out? Anyone? Anyone you want to say hi to? Uh, shout out uh, uh, all my friends at University of Dayton. Uh, I need to watch. <laughs> no, I'll send this to the Catholic okay, Life group chat. Yeah. I'll send this to the University of Dayton Catholic Life group uh, Catholic <laughs> Life blah, group blah, blah, chat. Blah. Yep. Um, shout out to all the Flyers. Uh, go Flyers. Oh, no. And uh, Nick Kendama. Nick Kendama. Shout out to Veronica who's sitting right there. Studio audience. Studio Thank audience. Thank you for I'm being the only, the only one that sat through. Uh, anti shout out to David and Simon. Anti shout out, yeah. <laughs> Cancel. Cancel. Shout out to anyone at Studentville and Brother Daniel if you're watching. He's telling me a lot about Mary. Alright, signing off for now. Pound it, not Miss <laughs> Pound it. Pound it, noggin. See ya. See ya. Click subscribe right here. Oh, it's over. Oh it's over. God. Oh, thank the Lord. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh. Yo! No, you can't drink that. Ew. <laughs>